so the watchings this week were a little bit slimmer on the picking side. Uh, a lot of that is simply because, um, well, there were a number of things. A couple get-togethers with friends where, you know, with one I watched additional One Piece, and he wanted to continue watching because, you know, sometimes it can be a really compelling watch. We ended at, we finished the second season, second voyage, second disc. And, well, um, I don't know, we, ended, we were maybe planning on watching that Naruto Shippuden movie, Bonds, the second movie, but we ended up not getting to that, so, can't, I still can't talk about that, um, but let's see. And, of course, the other thing was that um, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword came out last week, and I've been playing that a bit more. I, I am not too far in the game. I've played about 12 hours, and I think I just finished the first dungeon. I've been grinding rupees because Beetle's Air Shop shows up before that first dungeon, and you can buy a ton of stuff, and it's like, oh, well, I'm grinding experience in Minecraft. I'll grind Rupees and Skyward Sword at the same time. My impressions so far are it's very interesting. I can't really give a final opinion until I've played all of it because, you know, it's kind of a uh, all the thing. And the only reason I haven't really played a whole lot more is it's just a busy week. Some final get togethers with friends before the complications of moving out start and another friend who's moving out as well as my own moving out soon. And. So I, I guess I really can't comment too much on um, Skyward Sword right now. So the anime I watched, um, I don't. I'm pretty sure I watched one or two more discs of Pokemon Season Eight before um, before I went on to something else. I didn't finish it, and so of the content I watched, I can't really think of anything else to really mention. But I did remember last week that there were a couple of things I wanted to mention that. Yeah, I'm still talking about Pokemon Season 8, so, okay. Uh, let's see. Two things. First of all, um, it was nice that there was uh, story progress. As, and I'm not talking about just um, Ash getting gym badges and, in this case, May getting contest ribbons. But there was also the um, Team Magma, Team Aqua stuff, and uh, that one was, that stuff was pretty okay. In my opinion, not as spectacular as what happened in the games, especially in Pokemon Emerald, which I'm more familiar with. In fact, I don't even know if I've beaten Ruby and Silver. Maybe only Emerald. Oh. Well, anyways, um, that was all entertaining. And another thing is, you know, since, since they fall into their habits, sometimes they kind of forget how to make certain characters interesting. And I've talked about how entertaining Wobbuffet was. And... Lately, he just, you know, more token appearances, you know, every time and chime echoes kind of joining in that same pattern but the thing that's um the reason i'm bringing that up is because ash's torkoal has actually been a pretty amusing character i don't know why not highly amusing not as much as wabafet was but eh. all right so now that pokemon's over i watched the first set of um fairy tale that was pretty interesting Hmm. I guess I'm not quite sure what exactly I can think to comment on, other than to try and compare it to One Piece, because wasn't it made by the same person, people-ish or something? It doesn't really have the same feel, and that's one thing that's neat about it. I don't know, I guess what my friend said about it is good. I mean, he usually tries to avoid um, longer-running... Um, Shonen series, and longer running in this case usually means anything over 26 episodes. And that's usually because they kind they tend to mess up the pacing a bit, and Fairy Tail didn't feel like it was doing that. Like you said, it, you're watching it and it feels like there's progress. And if this was made by the same people who did One Piece, that maybe shouldn't be surprising. At least at this point, it feels like it's got a better pacing than One Piece does. But I'm not sure if that necessarily means that I like it more than One Piece. 
myself. Really, it's kind of hard to compare them at this point. So, you know, interesting watch. Perhaps the more interesting watch is I watched the um, the imported Blu-ray of Magical Girl Lyrica Nanoha, the movie first. In other words, the first Lyrical Nanoha movie. And if you're not familiar with what its contents are, it's basically a retelling of the first season of Magical Girl Lyrical Nanoha. So let's see. I'm not sure if I personally agree that the that it was better than the first season myself. But I can't really call it bad. There are some ways in which it is obviously not as good and effective as the first series, but other ways in which it is clearly far more effective. And the two of them actually complement each other pretty well. So, to begin with, um, the thing about the Magical Girl, the Girl the Noha movie that didn't compare so well is that it kind of had to move through the story of Magical Girl Lyrical Nanoha a bit faster, and it kind of didn't build up some of the interesting aspects of Nanoha, you know, as she learned to become, and you know, it, it kind of rushed it as if maybe we, the audience, just expect her to inherently be better, whereas the original series just had a very natural progression, in my opinion. Where it's kind of like they adapt, they learn, etc. So, I think that's actually expected from a movie version of uh, an entire series, even if it's a movie version of a 12 or 13 episode series. So, in all that regard, that aspect of this, the original series, which is a part I really liked, was weak, but what the movie did that was really interesting is something else that I really like, and complements the original series really well in that it spent far more time focusing on fate. And I guess I can't get into more details on exactly what that means, but it just, it, it, it's, it, it realizes that people just don't want the first series again, per se. They um, are looking for something new, and this movie really, really gives it by giving you a lot of characters to backstory information about fake Testarossa. So that, well, hopefully you, the watcher, establish more of a connection of everything there. Of what all's happened and, I don't know, just feel your universe expanding, so to speak. And then, of course, there's a thing that the movie did better than the series, which is, of course, superior action and... I think that's expected. I'm not 100% positive if that was completely undeniably a better thing for me, simply because a lot of what I liked about the action in the first Nanoha series was tied very closely to what to how the main character developed. And like I said, that wasn't as important a concept in the movie. But, uh, yeah, I can't really say the specific examples without spoiling either the series or the movie too much. Anyways, um, there we go. That's everything I watched this week. This next week could be crazy.